Hello everyone and welcome to some Mr. FPGA news. This week we will be talking about a new arcade core, updates on the consoleized Mr., Sega System 18 updates, and more. Also, check out my channel sponsor, Mr. Addams, a place where you can get all your Mr. needs. Things like full Mr. setups, IO boards, accessories, and more. Now let's get to the news. This is old info, but I just recently read about it on a Reddit post and thought some of my viewers might find it helpful. The D10 Nano seems to have some issues with the CEC protocol that is used to help control HDMI devices. This issue can cause unpredictable behavior or prevent communication with other HDMI devices connected to the chain. User PG Tanj on the Mr. FPGA forums said that this might be caused by an ESD protection device called U34 on the bottom of the D10 Nano PCB. And if you cut the connection to pin 1 on U34, it should resolve all HDMI CEC issues. The user also said that they believe that ESD protection is not needed because the relevant pin doesn't go anywhere else on the board. However, if you are like me and would prefer not to cut a pin off your board, you can still achieve the same effect in a safer way by using an adapter that strips HDMI CEC. I provided a link in the description. Some users have expressed preferring cutting off the pin because if they do use an adapter that strips the CEC protocol, they might forget about the issues altogether in the future and go crazy trying to figure what happened. But me personally, I would always try to avoid modifying my hardware if I can. If you are not experiencing this, then you can just ignore this and continue using your mister as you always have. The first version of the Iron M107 core has been released. It is heavily based on the M92 core with some additions to support an additional tile map layer and more sprites. At the moment, only the vertically scrolling shooter Aerosol is working, but Martin, the developer, will soon be adding support for the rest of the game. There were only three games made for this hardware. The aforementioned Aerosol and two soccer games. Update your Mr. Now to obtain the core. For the upcoming console version of the Mr. Clone, Taki Uran posted an image of the possible connections in the back. He's asking if it's worth having dedicated component connections, because for this mainstream version, he wants people to buy as few extras as possible. You can post your thoughts on the Twitter thread. While I do prefer a component connection, I can see many other users preferring RGB to Spark. But overall, to me, it really doesn't matter what extra connector is used, as long as the VGA and HDMI ports function the same way as they do on current Mr. Setup, where you can output component, RGB, composite, and as video through them with the appropriate adapter. I guess the extra video connector is more of a convenience feature for those users that are new to the hobby. Another post talks about manufacturing, a topic I'm not familiar with. The tweet says, I'll try to do weekend updates on company news. Mr. Board, two weeks left on 2K PCB order. Need to SMT5 for QA. One to two weeks after QA for full SMT. Flagship, 2D ID almost done. Mainstream same. Budget part console same. And hell, waiting on update. I believe the beginning of the tweet is talking about the bare motherboard orders and the amount of time to QA and finish the full motherboard with surface mounted chips. For the second part of the tweet, I believe it is talking about the industrial design for each model. Any of you that is familiar with manufacturing, please let me know in the comments if this is correct. A beta for the Sega System 18 core is expected to be released next Friday. Looks like Hotego's team is resolving the issues with a VDP chip as backgrounds are finally looking good. The Sega Saturn core has had the following updates. There were VDP-1 fixes that affected Sega Rally, Tomb Raider, Pandemonium, and Burning Rangers. VDP-2 fixes that affected Magical Night Dreams Cotton 2, King of Spirits, and Radiant Silver Gun. There was an SMPC fix for the reading of peripheral data. Unused modules for the SH chips were added to save on FPGA resources. And the DDR RAM controller was reworked to increase VDP-1 VRAM access speed. This will improve accuracy. Shane Lynch has made some progress in his reverse engineering of the Sega Mega Play hardware. He's created a fully custom BIOS that will help analyze the hardware. And the next step is to get regular Genesis games to run on it. Shane plans to create a flash card that's compatible with the Mega Play. 
and another long-term goal is to create an FPGA core. The Mega Plate was arcade hardware by Sega that was based on the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. It ran modified versions of Genesis games that made them work just like arcade games, where when you insert a coin, you are given a limited number of lives. This differs from Sega's other Genesis-based arcade hardware, the Megatech, and Nintendo's Place Toys 10, where instead of lives, you are given a limited amount of time to play the game when you insert a coin. So that's it for this episode. I provided links to all my sources in the description. Make sure you also check out RetroRTV.com to see my Mr. News videos in blog form and to get more retro related content. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.